Thank you. So I also know I'm standing between you and a break. So we're going to power through this. The title of the National Education Technology Plan is Transforming American Education, Learning Powered by Technology. And it was a very purposeful title with learning front and center. And this really does kind of wrap up this entire segment. Um, President Obama and Secretary Duncan and Anish uh, and Vivek pointed to this, that, um, that by 2020, the goal is to have more college, the per capita college graduates than any other country in the world. Right now, we're at about 39%, and that would require us to get to about 60%. So to do that, we have to pull out all the stops and do everything we can to create the best possible learning environments for this generation of students. The National Education Technology Plan is, is within a really interesting context. And I was listening to this last set of speakers. I thought, this is a fantastic time to be in education. We have, there's so much going for us from the technologies that you are all thinking about and developing, from the, the kinds of things happening. I'm sure every single one of you has the entire internet in your pocket as we speak. So do many, many, many of our students now. So mobility 24-7 access. The second is the proliferation of social interactions for learning. All of the social networks, the places people get together online, thinking about the TED Talks, thinking about all of these places that students, teachers, people go to learn when they wake up in the morning. The third being the, the uh, proliferation of digital content. And we know that there's, there's just tons and tons of material online now for learning, things people can can leverage and allows us to kind of go to that long tail of personalization. And fourth, this whole notion of moving our class, moving from a predominantly print-based classroom to, an, to creating online learning experiences. Right now, in many classrooms, we have textbooks and teacher's guides and assessments and supplemental materials, and much of these are kind of in a print-based pile. We also have online courses where students go today, and most of these are individually based. They go online to, to recover a credit or whatever. And what we need to do is bring these together in the middle so that we have really engaging, inspiring, interesting learning environments online so that people can have this participatory opportunity to take classes, to work with peers, and to, to interact with content. We'll talk really quickly a little bit more about that. So the National Education Technology Plan has five sections. There's, first of all, the learning section, front and center. Second, there's the teaching section. How do we think about teaching in this environment? Third, there's, this, there's the conversation about assessments and how do we better use assessment for continuous improvement. Fourth, the infrastructure then that needs to be present in order to make this vision of learning, teaching, and assessment happen. And fifth, Jim Shelton talked a little bit about productivity. How do we create a way more productive learning environment for every single one of our students? And when I say our students, this plan actually covers from cradle to career. So thinking about young children and thinking about people that are in the labor market um, currently and still obviously learning, learning, learning and preparing for their next job. So, the learning sections, I'm going to go through through each of these so you can get a sense of what's here. And I will just tell you, I'm going to do this very quickly so that you can just get a sense. And then I'm going to tell you that this plan is online at um, ed.gov slash technology. And people have told me this 80-some uh, page plan is a page turner. So I'm sure you'll all download it and read it quickly. There's also an executive summary, however. So first of all, the plan is really focused on how do we make sure that we're teaching what matters? How do we teach students? How do we focus on 21st century expertise? And to do this, we looked across the industry, across what photographers do, what biologists do, what an accountants do, what people do when they go to work in, in, the, in the morning, and the kinds of things that allow people to learn. And what are those kinds of skills that students need to be successful in their everyday learning today, and then also that will set them up to be much more critical thinkers, collaborators, problem solvers, people able to learn and learn and learn throughout their life. So we really focused on how people learn. What is the, what is the intersection of uh, cognitive science and brain development, and how do we really know, what do we know about how people learn? One of the things we know is the importance of motivation, of prior experience, and of that long tail of personalization. What are people interested in? Love the TED Talks. Obviously, probably all of you have seen these. And there are so many things to be interested in. And today, it's very possible when students are online, when people are online, that you can get that long tail of personalization. You can figure out what hooks students in. 
And fourth, this whole notion of universal design for learning, again, referencing the TED Talks, that whole translation piece. When you have content online, it becomes way more powerful for people with all sorts of learning preferences or disabilities. The people who work with print disabilities like to say, it's not the people who are disabled, it's the print that's disabled. It can't read to you, it can't turn its own pages, it can't navigate for you. When you put this content online, you can build in accessibility technologies, you can build in the kinds of things that are helpful for every single learner. It's kind of like the, the metaphor that, the, or that you think about the sidewalk cutouts. Those are created for people on wheelchairs. It turns out they're really helpful for people with strollers or people with uh, bicycles or whatever. So it's the same kind of thing when we think about uh, content online, really able to be empowered, translated. It can read to you, it can navigate, it can create simulations, visualizations of complex math and science concepts. Much more powerful learning environment when we can engage students with technology. And finally, the opportunity to connect informal and formal learning, learning environments. John Seeley Brown talks about the power of pull and the opportunity that people have to learn everywhere they go all day long. And how do we really um, uh, collect all of that and pull that together so that people, um, so that we're, we're, um, we're leveraging all of that learning that students have everywhere they go. The teaching section was interesting, and really what we, the, the essence of this is that teachers, in order to be highly effective, need to be highly connected. Connected to the tools, the data, the resources, the, and the experts, and the expertise to know what to do with each and every student all the time. And we also want teachers to be able to leverage everything online so that they can do the best that they can do every single moment for every single student. And again, that they can also be connected to all the other parts of a student life, student's life where they're learning. And again, this is great for preschool, school age, higher education, and so on. And finally, we want a generation of teachers to be inspired, to be as empowered as possible. One of the things that we know if you walk into a classroom today, if it's void of technology, teachers really kind of have two hands tied behind their back. They're trying to do the best they can with the materials they have. We need to figure out how to completely power up every single classroom in the country if we're going to get way more students over that higher bar. So when we think about assessment, assessment is really for the purpose of continuous improvement. It's to really think about how do we turn data into information that can help us get better and better and better. So the first thing about assessment is we need to measure what matters. Last week we launched what, what uh, Secretary Duncan called assessment 2.0, $350 million worth of funds that will be put out for creating the next generation of assessments. Probably all of you remember the assessments or you know the assessments today. We're really relegated to the, to the bubble tests. So what we can do now, however, is embed assessments throughout the learning experience for every single student. These also, the opportunity now with technology is to give students real-time feedback. They don't have to wait until the teacher grades their paper and gives them their score. They can get, they, the, the technology tools can adapt to them provide them what they need when they need it, and they can begin to um, have real-time feedback. This also helps students when they're publishing online. They can get feedback from a lot more people than just their teacher. As we say, they can take their work and put it online, put it out there rather than just on the refrigerator. And finally, we're looking, thinking about healthcare um, and other places where students have, uh, where we can create kind of persistent learning records. The universal design for learning also is associated with the with how we think about assessment. All of this for continuous improvement so we can use the technology and the data to get better and better information so that we know what to do every single moment of the day. And so the infrastructure section is really about 24-7, commun community-wide, so that's at school, at home, broadband everywhere, and we're working with the Department of Commerce, Department of Agriculture in the broadband build-out. Really important, we need to get broadband in every part of the country. And then each student having access points, devices that they can use 24-7 to do their work. If education is a knowledge industry, which it is, we need to make sure that people have supported access 24-7, and that it's equitable. It's not just for those students who can't afford it, but for every single student. The productivity section is, is again, Jim talked about this. It's about cost efficiency, about building, doing process redesigns. So we really think about every part of the education system, how we can get better and better, smarter and smarter, so we can get way more students over that higher bar. 
We have a project um, called the Learning Registry that Steve Midgley will be here talking about tomorrow, and he's also kind of working on interoperability standards that is, is part of the, um, the enabling technology that makes this hap happen. So finally, research and development. This is, this is the section of the plan where we really thought about what needs to be invented. How do we make the, all of this happen? What are the kinds of things we have now, and what do we have to see happen? And we know we had these kind of grand challenges that we articulated in the plan, but things like how do we get broadband everywhere? How do we make sure that every student has a device? What are the kinds of devices that will make this possible? How do we leverage the devices students have at home within the context of their, of their school environment and more? We're really trying to manage the, the transition from this predominantly print-based classroom to, an, to, a, a digital, to these digital learning experiences. And with that, I will wrap it up. And the National Education Technology Plan was in draft form online, and we're just about to launch the final, um, final draft and lots of actions and recommendations in there, enough to go around. So thank you for your work. We'd love to get a fraction of your uh, thinking on... Um, uh, how you think about data and algorithms and focus it in on education. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks. Appreciate it.